Did you ever hear of 12 Forever? It's a show about a young girl named Reggie who never wants to grow up. Yep, you heard me right. She never wants to grow me her to age more. However, I am kind of concerned that there was something dark within the series. I was at a store named Value Village, which is a thrift shop, and I was looking for some DVDs based on the TV shows. That's when I came across something. It was a picture of a girl looking at me with bloodshot eyes. I remember that I had a Netflix friend of mine who had named every single of the series. So I bought the DVD and got into my car, called my friend George who knew what the, this DVD was. And when I got into contact with me, he told me everything about what I found. And this is what he said. The girl you're seeing on the front is named Reggie. She is from a TV series called 12 Forever. I found the DVD a few days ago and it kind of scared me. So I sold the DVD to Value Village. Trust me, that will you see it will shock you. I felt confused for 10 seconds, but after that I thought it was my own adventure was about to begin. I put the DVD into my Xbox One when I got home and started to watch it. The intro looked normal enough, even though I haven't watched the entire series, but from what I do remember was that the trailer in fact was debuted in 2019. The title of the episode was called Reggie Ends It All. I was thinking that 12 Forever had a secret series finale. The episode started with Reggie playing banjo in a talent show that she had in school according to the poster next to her. Her mom came in and took claiming that dinner was ready, so I remember that she was playing a mega xylophone from Undertale. Now, what was Netflix thinking? The time tile card appeared that said two days later. It then showed some people gathering around for the talent show. Obviously, Reggie's family was nowhere to be seen as if they want to do it, her to do it herself. There was a silence for about five seconds before some French English announcer spoke out. Ladies and gentlemen, the school feeder center is the proud present Reggie Abbott. What kind of disappointed was that Reggie's eyes were bloodshot. I have no idea what happened. Reggie started playing the banjo for lots of people were booing. And they started to leaving after just a few seconds of the music. Reggie was disappointed and she had a sad look on her face and she walked away. Meanwhile, there was a shot of Reggie's house at night. It then cut to Reggie. She was sitting on her bed what looked like a still sad look. She was like this for 10 more seconds before her body started moving as she put her legs together and her hands over her eyes. Reggie was crying, but it didn't sound like cartoon crying. It was actual crying, as if the voice actor was sobbing. I also noticed that there was another sound blowing Wayne in from the intro of the fox and the hound. This lasted for about six minutes before Reggie then looked up at the screen. Her eyes were now blood red. She looked at me for 25 seconds until she cried again, except it sounded like an older woman. After 20 seconds, it showed something that made me jump out of my seat. It was a picture of Reggie, standing in a dark room. Her eyes were red with black pupils. It lasted for about three minutes until it cut to another clip. The next scene was also scary. Reggie took out what seemed to be a shotgun. And, of course, the there was a black screen. And, of course, we don't see what she was going to do with it. A time tile card appeared again, and this time it said the next day. Reggie woke up to see to get Reggie to school, and what she saw was Reggie dead on the floor. It then cuts to the church, with people walking inside. Reggie's parents were hosts of the funeral. The mother spoke out. Our daughter Reggie has unfortunately taken her own life last night. It must have been when we gave her a bra on her birthday. I don't know why our sweetheart did her this to herself. We just don't know. Goodbye. Then it fade to black for 15 seconds, before cutting to the credits. I was so scared of what I saw. Later on that day, I called George and told him about my experience. He apologized about what happened. To this day, I sold the tape somewhere else. And if you see it, please don't buy it. Wow. <laughs> this actually took me down memory lane. Like, I remember narrating this, I guess, in 2019. I think that's when I narrated this. I don't remember. But, anyways. And that, my little pretties, was, um, I guess you could say... 12 Forever Lost, uh, Reggie Ends It All. A 12 Forever Lost Episode Creed Pasta written by Ashley Armbruster. Um, uh, my final thoughts on this story? Alright, um, I kind of remember, you know, doing this. But, you know, I'm just gonna be completely honest. Uh, this story was 
not bad. Not a bad curry pasta, in my opinion. I wasn't, you know, angry or anything like that. It's actually a pretty good story. Well, it's a de it's an all right story. It's not a bad one at that. Like the concept, I could definitely say there were some cliches in the story that kind of took me off of the story just a bit. But I'm just gonna explain what the parts of it that was. Now I have not to remember reading this story. It's been like quite a long time, actually. I think the last time I narrated this was about I don't know uh, a year ago. Well, almost two years ago or something. I can't remember. But I decided to go ahead and re-narrate this story because I have not remembered narrating this story in like, oh god, it's been like quite a long time since I last sat there and did this story. So I definitely have to say that the story actually was not bad. It was not a bad story. It actually was pretty decent, although there are some issues with it. For one... Well, the DVD cliche, it was not from Goodwill, Value Village. It's still a thrift store cliche, but it actually did not mention Goodwill or anything like that. So there's that. I'm definitely going to be honest. But there's also another part of this with, you know, the bloodshot eyes. And I'm like, oh my god. And why would you actually sit there and, you know, put bloodshot eyes in a blood eyes? That's cliched. Another cliche I could definitely say was that... It was actual crying. Like, why would anybody add that in a creepypasta? That's just something I'm not getting or understanding, is why people think it's a good idea to sit there and do that. I just don't know why. But I could definitely say that it actually didn't really make a whole lot of sense as to why this was the case. I don't know. I think this is probably a troll pasta, but I don't really see uh Well, I, I don't see, like, a... You could definitely say a, um, I guess you could say a, um, what was it? Say again, I, I can't remember. It's been a while. But I definitely have to say I have not seen this, um, in a lot, long time. So that's actually one of the reasons, um, why I haven't did this story. Wow. I'm going to have to read, um, more of Ashley Armbruster's stories. Because I haven't read any of his in a while. And I remember reading this from my... Well, from 2019. So I decided to go ahead and do this one. And the fact that, you know, Reggie sits there and, well, ends up taking her own life. I know people are going to say, Oh, it's a ripoff of, of the Spongebob episode of when Squidward did the... Like, look. I don't know why people were saying that in 2019, but... I could definitely say, um, I think this might have been an inspiration from that Spongebob Famous One episode. I'm not saying the actual name what Squidward is, well, the S word. I'm not gonna say it because, well, well, because YouTube doesn't is sensitive with that. But, with all due sincerity, the, the grammar was decent. It does need to be worked on, though. The grammar does need to be worked on. But I understand this is an older story and I found this story again. So I wanted to re-narrate this one because it's been like a long time. But yeah, this was actually a decent story. It was not bad. Does need some little bit of work. But other than that, the story could have been, would be a lot better. But, you know, the grammar was decent. It wasn't terrible. I did notice a few grammatical errors and punctuation errors in the story. So those need to be fixed up. But other than that, it's a pretty good story. Well, a decent one at that. Maybe not the perfect story I've seen, but I've seen quite better. The story was not bad, it just needs some work. Now, I guess that's all I have to really say, because I kind of remember reading this back in 2019, and I'm really glad I found this story again, because, oh my goodness, I haven't read this story in a while. So, I guess you can have to, you could definitely say that right now, that this story was actually... Um, I was tagged, it was prop and Gosia was, was, um, in this, one of the tags saying, for the Shadow Linus, so, I decided to go ahead and sit there and narrate this story again, because I haven't read this story in a while, I've been looking for this story, because I wanted to re-narrate it, so, I've been, like, looking everywhere for that story, and I finally have this story, so, this does take me down memory lane, so, that's why it's not a bad creepypasta, I think my I think I did not like it at one point but I but now I think my opinion has changed but 
anyways, I am definitely have to say that now it's pretty... It's a decent story. It's not bad. It just needs some work. That's all I have to say. It just needs some work. It's not bad. It's definitely not great either, but it's an alright one. Now, I guess with that being the case, and with that being said, um, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of this story would have to be, I guess you could say a, um, what was it? Oh yeah, I'm gonna give this one, I guess you could say a 5 out of, 5.5 5 out of 10. I'll give it a 5.5 5 out of 10 because the story was not bad. It was, um, because that's my opinion change, it was alright. Not the best one, but I could definitely say it was, was a decent one. It just needs to be worked on, mainly with not including too many cliches that were in it. And another thing I could definitely say is, well, the, the, uh, grammar needs to be fixed up at certain parts, and same with the sentence structuring. But other than that, this story was not that bad, Dash and Bruster. You did pretty good. Now, anyways, I guess that with that being the case, with that being said, what did you guys think about this Cree pasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Leave me now your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so then you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.